Hi everybody, it's Melanie with Lost and Found and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're doing something really fun that I hope is gonna become a regular part of the channel. I am interviewing Lori from Fairy Dust and Rust. She is a fellow antique booth business owner. She also does a fantastic job promoting her store on Instagram and selling online. And we're gonna chat with her today about her booth business, how she got started, the lessons that she's learned. You guys are gonna really enjoy hearing her story. And I'm telling you, she's got some real nuggets in there that you're going to want to pay attention to for your own booth business. So let me introduce Lori. Let's get started. All right. Well, we're going to get started with Lori from Fairy Dust and Rust. I'm so excited that she's here with us today and appreciate her taking some time out to share with us. I just think she has some fantastic stuff for you guys to hear. And hopefully we'll be able to chat with more booth owners in the future, but I was super excited to have Lori as the first one to come on. So first I just want to give her a chance to tell us a little bit about yourself, your family, your business. Why did you get started in this? How long have you been going? Just give us the basic rundown. Okay. Well, hi, Melanie. Thank you for asking me um, to be on here. I'm very flattered. Um, so my, um, my story is kind of similar, I think, to a lot of other booth owners. Um, I started um, in a career in um, actually in finance. I was um, okay. a financial advisor. They used to call us stockbrokers. And um, I worked in that business for uh, over 20 years. Wow. And um, that was great. I worked with my father. And um, I really, I think what I learned in that business um, that I, you know, still use in my current business with the booth and the antiques is how to take care of clients mm. and how to make people feel, um, important and listen to um, what their needs are and to nurture. Um, those are the things that I learned way back then. And, um, I still feel, you know, I guess that they're important to do in, even in this business. Um, so I started, um, I, I knew that, that that the job in finance really wasn't like in my heart, although I love the clients the most of all. Um, when I had my family, I have two children. Um, when I had my kids, I started looking for furniture for mm -hmm. them. And it was very difficult to find furniture that was good quality. Yeah. Um, and it was expensive, you know, yeah. just... <laughs> and it was particle board. It came from overseas and I couldn't justify in my mind spending, you know, a thousand dollars on a bedroom outfit, yeah. you know, a crib and all of that. And, um, you know, and just get something that was like junk basically. Yeah. And so, um, I went into my local, um, antique shop, which is where I'm currently a vendor at Midwest Memories in Tip City, Ohio. And I found this dresser that was painted uh, white with Annie Sloan chalk paint. And um, it was perfect. And it was hardwood and it had dovetail drawers and it was heavy. And that was one of the, you know, the, the biggest moments in my mind that was kind of like, wow, I, I want to buy it. And yeah. then I started going to some other thrift shops and, um, it's not, not estate sales yet. That kind of came later, but thrift shops and finding other pieces of furniture, like a side table. And then I learned how to paint the furniture and, um, started really painting it for myself. And then I had a couple of friends that would say, Oh, can you paint something for me too? Yeah. Awesome. So you really did start primarily with painted furniture. Um, and then your booth grew out of that. Yeah, so the painted furniture was, um, I'd say it was, a, my daughter was born in 2010, so it was right around, um, you know, 2000, right around, I guess, that time that I really needed um, the furniture, mm -hmm. and that's uh, the my second child, and um, that's who I was looking for, yeah. um, but before then, I... Um, you know how you get those Facebook pop-ups that remind you what you did like 10 years ago? Yeah. Well, I used to, um, I used to have a business hobby called Fairy Gardens by Lori. Okay. <laughs> and I did craft shows uh -huh. and I made fairy gardens in like really beautiful terrariums and I would take them to craft shows and I would sell them. So, um, 
I love florals and um, that, so that kind of started, that was the first thing that I really did that was creative. Right. And then um, when I decided that I wanted to open up a booth um, at the um, shop up in Tip City at Midwest Memories, uh, it was a combination of the painted furniture and my fairy gardens. Okay. Is how it started. And then I um, would, um, I, I knew that I needed other things like smaller items. So I started finding things like bird cages, like old antique bird cages, and then started going to estate sales and learning about antiques and what was collectible. Right. And, um, and it was just more of a hobby. I still had my full-time job and as a financial advisor yeah. at that time. Okay. So how long were you doing the booth, um, would you say, where you were kind of doing it as a hobby and then you decided, hey, I'm going to actually put some more work into this and see if I can transition this into some sort of reliable business. What Tell us about kind of that switch that happened. Yeah, so that was, um, so my booth officially started in 2013. Okay. And um, I did um, an early retirement um, from my company, mm -hmm. and I did that in 2016. Um, and then, so you have like a few years where you're still kind of working for the company, but you're slowly phasing out. Yeah. And um, that was nice because I was still able to have like the, a revenue coming from my old business while I transitioned from my, uh, to my hobby to try to make that a real business. Right. And, um, and what I found is that, um, I had to start treating this booth like it was a real business yeah, um, and not a hobby <laughs> anymore. Right. Right. And that meant like finding people to help yeah. and finding um, coaches. And um, I started looking on uh, Facebook for ideas for how to stage an antique, you know, booth. Right. What are, what, what should I be doing? And then um, after that um, it was really the the social media that I got into with Instagram primarily and then Facebook secondarily to find um, to put out pictures of what I was doing right and then I found this community of home decor people that yeah. were doing the same thing yeah so that's super interesting like our timeline is really similar like I opened I started lost and found in 2012 when I was six months pregnant with my third kid which is really not a great time to start a business. But I had been on the waiting list at my favorite antique mall and a spot opened up and I thought, well, you know, now or never. And similarly, I mean, just it kind of tooled around as a hobby. And then right around the same time, 2016, 2017, I started saying this needs to be like, I want this to, to be something that's going to provide me with income that I can rely on. And you're 100% right that you there is a mindset shift that you have to make of I'm going to treat this like if I want business level income then I have to treat this like a business if I treat it like a hobby then it's going to produce some hobby cash you know in my pocket every once mm -hmm. in a while so yeah. I love that I agree with that wholeheartedly so um tell us a little bit about what has worked well for you over the years and maybe what hasn't worked well, or I, yeah, so you started with the fairy gardens. Mm -hmm. um, how did you get to where you are now? Like, I, I think people that are just starting out feel like they have to have it all figured out at the start. And you've been doing this for a while now, and it sounds like your business has evolved a lot. So I love letting people get to hear, you know, and mine has too. Like, hey, you don't have to know it all when you start. You, you learn things as you go, and you adjust, and you make changes. So... What are some things that you've kind of had to adjust, some things that, that weren't maybe working well um, or some things that worked well, for, worked well for a while, but then you had to tweak and try something else? Yeah, so that's a good um, good question. That, that there's a lot there. Um, I think that um, the things that worked well for me was, um, you know, kind of the, the soft like nurturing, like the, mm -hmm. um, the being kind to, um, the customers and being fair in my prices and, um, and honest, mm -hmm. um, you know, those are all the things again that I learned from my former career that I took to the booth. Um, 
I spend um, a lot of time in my booth. Uh-huh. Um, I think that's super important because, um, you know, you have to be in there, I'd say at least two to three times a week. And I'm fortunate that my booth is close. Um, so I can be there that often. And so it's things like, you know, the rearranging and fluffing and bringing new merchandise in. Um, but more importantly, it's being there when customers come in yeah. to the booth because, you know, I'm not, I don't work at the shop right. and I'm only, I, you know, you go in before the, we have a shop, um, hours where we can come in before the store opens to the public. Um, but it's super important to be there when your customers are there because that's when they tell you things, you yeah. know, yeah. like how much they, um, how much they love your booth, you know, and what they like about it. Or they'll say, oh my gosh, I bought so many things from you. Yeah. Do you remember this? Do you remember that? And um, you build like that, that personal relationship um, with um, the customers when you're there. And, um, you know, I'm not there waiting for people to come in, but mm-hmm. when I am there, I leave feeling like so like full of like joy and happiness because what I'm doing is like making a difference in their life and they really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, things that haven't worked so well, um, I think that would probably be things, you know, that, um, not having the confidence to charge more (laughs) for some of my pieces, like Uh to be completely honest, um, you know, some things you get for free, right? Like right. on the side of the road or friends give to you. And it's understanding how to value your time yes. because the time that it takes to create this, um, you know, dresser to repaint it and to put the new hardware and to transport it. And um, it's not something like you have children, I have children, you're constantly like, you know, doing a coat of paint running back in, making dinner, <laughs> going back out. You know, you're doing yeah. this not necessarily at all hour, at all hours of the that's day right. versus like a nine to five job. That's right. Um, so that, that's challenging is how you um, are, how you fit in this, you know, lifestyle that is essentially like 24 seven in my mind. Yeah. Um, and, and then feeling confident to, you know, put a, a higher price tag on it, yeah. which is something that I still struggle for because I, you know, I just, I want to be fair to right. my customer. And sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm just underpricing things. Yeah. Um, and that's why I, I reach out to people like you um, who help us learn like skills like that, because that doesn't come easily you know, pricing, Yeah. you know, what are you supposed to be pricing things at? That's, that's, right. that's a hobby. You know, I'm not doing it as a hobby. I'm doing it as a business. And if I want to, um, you know, continue to do this and earn a living at it, I need to make a profit. I can't just yeah. like cover it. Yeah, man, that like 100%. <laughs> I love that so much. In fact, I did a video, I think just two or three weeks ago titled, um, are your prices too low? And talked about uh-huh. that, that there is a mindset of um, like that, that a lot of times we're under pricing things. And exactly like you said, you have to understand the value of what it is that we provide. And some, I think sometimes like if somebody gives you something for free, like you said, we feel bad about, well, I shouldn't charge that much, but really that's an opportunity for a great profit margin. And Correct. When you're thinking like a business owner, there's nothing wrong with having a really good profit margin. Um, so I'm just 100% with you. And I love what you said, too, about connecting with your customers. I think that's one of the biggest challenges that booth owners face and one of the best things that you can do for your business. People um, in my boot camp course ask a lot. They want to know the particulars about, well, how do I buy it and how do I display it? And I'm constantly telling them those things matter, but what matters even more is that you build a brand and connect with your customers. You cannot have the best stuff, but if you're connected with your customers, you can still have a great business. So I super agree with both of those. So, 
All right, um, moving on because my computer is telling me I'm I'm getting full storage here as we record this. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> I'll keep going. Um, so you talked about Instagram. You do amazing on Instagram. That's one of the ways you connect with your customers. Um, tell us about what you do and how that has worked for you. Yeah. So Instagram, um, I never knew how important it was going to be. Mm. Um, the first even like whisper of Instagram came from, um, my nail technician years ago Okay, <laughs> and she said, you need to be on Instagram to show all your vintage stuff. Yeah. And I thought, what, like, it's just pictures, right? And that, that was many years ago. Um, and so Instagram, um, I started on Instagram. There was a, um, and I don't even know that probably the, maybe it was 20, 14, 2015, um, there was a group called Decor Newbies, and it taught you how to um, use Instagram for home decor. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of what we did was we created hashtags. So um, I was in a group um, with a few other people, and um, I'm the only one that still is that runs the hashtag, the original member mm -hmm. of Blame It on My Vintage Heart. Okay. Yeah. So, what we would do is we would every Thursday, you know, we would have a, a caption and write up, and you know, we say we want to see, we we'd pick, pick a picture of somebody that we liked, and then we would talk about them and we'd share that. And um, if you use the hashtag, then you could get a chance to be featured on something that you posted, like, like a nice, right. beautiful um, display the next week. So the hashtags were really the first way that I started using Instagram. And then once you um, are connecting with people, you're f and putting out pretty pictures, you know, the hashtag would just run one day, but the rest of the week I would put pictures of my booth or pictures of um, things that I had in my home that I was going to be taking to the booth, uh -huh. or uh, DIY videos were super popular um, and important. Um, and then it's <clears throat> I just got this following that was very organic. That uh, I've never bought any followers. I don't even think I know how <laughs> to do that. Um, and it's it's just really um, a super supportive group, as you know of women mostly there are some men out there but it's mm -hmm. primarily women who um who like it they're, they're small businesses like ours and they promote each other mm -hmm. and it's super selfless and i often think of the quote we rise by lifting others um because that's like what instagram is like when you have like a new um like, I know when you moved to your booth, you know, it was exciting for me to, um, one day I think I shared about that and you're having a, a Facebook sale and we do that with other vendors, um, because we want people to shop small yeah. and to shop online or go to their booth. And, um, Instagram is just a very supportive community, um, uh, you know, of, people and then buyers too, because not everybody is a booth owner or um, an online shop. There's a lot of customers, you know, like um, friends and family and girlfriends um, that want to buy that kind of stuff. Right. Right. Yeah. And so the second part of my Instagram journey was linking it um, to my website and so I can tag items when I um, post a picture on Instagram. I can tag items, and if somebody likes that, they can go onto my website and actually purchase that. Yeah. So that's great. That was the next thing I wanted to ask you about was your website and selling online. And I, I, it seems like that's relatively new, or maybe you just relaunched it. I remember kind of when it came out. I don't know if that was the first launch or if you had rebuilt it and launched it. But I'd love to hear more about... Um, you know, what made you step into that kind of new space and mm -hmm. how has that gone for you? If there's something you wish you would have known beforehand, um, or just a, a lesson that you've had. I know people are, are so often terrified of the thought of shipping something to somebody Yeah, and just, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. So tell us, tell us about your online store. Okay. So, um, I had an Etsy store, okay. um, and I actually had my, I did some fairy garden work, um, some hand wrapped birch vases and uh, book stacks and things like that that I made. 
years ago. Yeah. Um, and it, and then I just kind of, you know, put it on vacation for years, <laughs> never really did anything with it. And I just focused on my booth. Uh -huh. Um, and I knew that there was an opportunity online, but I was afraid of shipping. I was afraid of all of that because I didn't know how to, you know, weigh a package, how to take pictures and, and all the things that you're afraid to do. Um, <clears throat> and it was because of the pandemic and COVID yeah. that yeah. our shop, was closed down for about, um, you know, a month or so. And I thought, well, I have this Etsy site. Let me just see if I can list some of my vintage items on my Etsy and see if I can sell them. Yeah. And, um, I did. And my goal was to, um, get a hundred sales. And I thought like, I'll never, ever get a hundred like orders ever. And, and I did, and it was quicker than I thought. So, um, Etsy started working and I remember getting, you know, sales in the middle of the night, like 3am, my phone <laughs> would start pinging and people from, and I live in Ohio and I was getting orders from California, the state of Washington, New Mexico, yeah. Florida. And I was like, so flabbergasted that people were buying and, um, I thought, oh my gosh, this is a whole new opportunity. Yeah. This is a whole new pool of people that are buying my things. So I then I was so excited and tried to figure out, you know, how I can continue to make this, um, you know, another source of um, of selling, right, right, and how to do it really well. Um, and I started looking online and, and really wanting to get better at. Um, shipping, um, packages. And, um, you know, I had, I went and bought a scale. I did all the things that you need, learned how, um, to do it effectively. And, you know, at first it wasn't good. I think I bought the most expensive flat rate boxes that I could from <laughs> yeah. the post office. Cause that's, I figured, Hey, I'll just, we all did. Yes. <laughs> put it in there. Right? right. Right. And then I got the scale and now I understand how to ship. Um, so my goal was to get a hundred sales on Etsy and I got it. And now I have, um, over 400 sales on Etsy and, um, you know, my goal is a thousand there. Um, but what I learned is, um, so when you're selling online, um, uh, you know, you, you have all these new people, right. And right. You, you, I had a real chance to, um, deliver my deliver an experience to them through the package that they were getting in the mail. Um, since I'm not at the shop, I can't control how, you know, the checkout process goes. Right. But when I got an order on Etsy, I felt like, wow, this is my chance to really make the customer feel special. So when I package something, um, I make it as like they're opening a gift. Yeah. Okay. And so they're excited about it. And I always will throw in like a little extra something like a free gift. And, um, I do that just because it makes me feel good. Um, and that's like the nurturing part of me. Right. <laughs> and, um, because I know like how I would feel like if I purchased something online and I got something in there that was like unexpected, you know, yeah. and it was wrapped really pretty and a pretty ribbon and pretty packaging. And <clears throat> then I took it, um, I have a friend who's a graphic designer and I said, I really want to get my logo redone. Can you help me? And so, um, I hired her to do my logo for fairy dust and rust. And then the next thing you know is like um, special packaging tape that has your logo. You can get tissue paper with your logo. I mean, you can go all out and, um, I did pick and choose some of those things to do, but uh, you have to watch your costs because right. that's all, ex you know, extra costs. Right. Um, <clears throat> and then, um, I, you know, Etsy is great. Um, and then I decided that, um, I was going to start working with some business coaches that would help to take that business to the next level too. Mm -hmm. either, you know, the retail in store and then also online, how right. to increase sales online. And I found that through Instagram was a great way to um, to get more sales online. Mm -hmm. um, about seventy percent of my sales come from social media. Wow! And um, I decided that I wanted to hire someone to create a website for me because what I learned in some of the coaching that we uh, did and uh, was that 
you don't own your Etsy site. As right. good as it is, you know, they could shut you down for putting a product that violated, um, you know, their community. Um, right. And I never realized that until, um, you know, I was in these classes and I thought, oh, gosh, I don't want that to happen. And the emails, they're not your emails no, either. they're not. Okay, so you can't, like, use those to contact that person again. Right. And so I decided, well, I need a website. I bought the domain name years ago, Fairy Dust and Rust. And um, I found someone to create this website. She lives in California. And her and I worked together. And I told her, you know, my vision for this website, and she was super um, in tune to my vision. Yeah. And it was like a perfect fit. It was like a God-made match to find her. And um, we opened up the website in May of 2021. And um, I've had 100 sales since then through that website. Awesome. Um, but what I learned, um, once I opened that website, you know, I was just waiting like for the orders and like, where, where is everybody, <laughs> yeah. you know, and nobody was coming to my website yeah. because you're such a small fish in like this huge pond. Right? right. Right. And then I, then it made me appreciate Etsy because Etsy brings mm -hmm. people to you. Right. When you have a website, you have to find the people to bring them to your website. Right. Yeah. And then that tied back into Instagram and Facebook right and when you are posting something it doesn't always have to be posting your products on there um, but every now and then I'll, ha I'll have a post or have a story that will incorporate one of the products that I'm selling and um, you know people are buying them that yeah. way yeah yeah so what I'd love hearing is that you like you've got several different irons in the fire and they're kind of all built on the basis of this booth, right? It's kind of the, the starting point, but then you've added Etsy and then you discovered, well, there's a little hole over here for my website. And, and you're completely right that they both have their pros and cons. And I think you teach some workshops in your, in your um, mm -hmm. booth that you do. So you've just got multiple different things. And I, we talk about that in the booth seller boot camp that, you, we don't need to be limited in what we're thinking about our booths, that we can build this much broader business on the basis of this booth that seems like this little thing, but it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a little thing. It can really be a full professional business with lots of different ways that you're making revenue. So I, I love hearing that. That's one of the reasons for sure that I wanted to have you on. Um, cause I just think that's mm -hmm. really inspiring for people to hear. So as we wrap up, if there, if you had anything that you, you know, one thing that you would really want to hammer home or that you think is super important for someone who's getting started, what would that be? Um, for someone who's getting started in their booth and that really wants to, you know, take it to the next level, um, it would be to be there, um, okay. to be there at the shop. Uh, rearrange a lot, fluff, bring in new items, and be there and engage with your customers, and um, and then social media too, yeah. um, because that's how you're going to attract new people um, into your shop, um, and that's how you will connect with people that are in your shop, and you'll yeah. start getting messages saying, "Hey, I just bought this from you," and they'll send you pictures of it. That's you know? right, and it's a great way to. Um, to get to know your customers, right. you know, when you're not there. Yeah. Even, um, and go ahead. And the, the last thing I'll say is that, um, one thing that I learned is that there's so you might, someone might think that there's so many booths, right? Like how am I going to be different and why should I do this? Um, or I'm just going to blend in. <clears throat> and, um, I've often thought that too. Um, and I recently had this, um, someone else say this, and it totally hit home, which was um, to be authentic and that nobody can copy your authenticity. And I thought, wow, that like really hit home because nobody can be who I am and I can't be my booth person next door. Right. Um, and if you stay true to yourself and to what you're sharing with people and what you're creating and making, um, there's room for you and there's room for your next door neighbor and yeah. you know, there's room for everybody and, yeah. and to support each other because it all ties into making, you know, the shop better. That's right. I love that. I, I think that's fantastic. So many times I've seen 
some com- like a competitive nature among booth sellers. You know, we don't want to yeah. share our picking spots and little clicks can form. And I, I love it when we can change that mindset. And exactly like you said that, Hey, if, like if my booth next to me is doing great, that means mine's going to do even better. And so there's no reason to feel like we're competing with anybody in our booths. Like we want everybody to do great because that just means the whole mall in general will do better. So I think that's right. an awesome, awesome point. So, well, thank you so much. It's been fantastic getting to talk to you. And um, oh, great. again, it's Lori at Fairy Dust and Rust, and we're going to make sure to have, all the different places where people can find you are in the description of this video. Um, okay. But I'm excited. I hope some new folks come over. And um, you have you said you have a YouTube channel that you, you've kind of dipped your toe in a little bit. And so we'll send some people that way. And okay. um, when, when you're working on it more, you'll have some folks ready to, to watch and to, and to yeah. hear from you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I think that my YouTube channel right now would just be like of just all bloopers yeah. okay, <laughs> of the videos that I've tried to make <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> because they've all been failed so far. So eventually I will figure that out. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, there'll be some folks waiting on you when you are ready from, from this video, yeah. I'm sure. So, okay. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I did. I do hope to have more antique booth business owners on in the future. Hopefully, again, this will be a recurring series. I think it's something really fun and a great way that we can learn from each other and be encouraged by each other's experiences. If you want to jump in more right now into growing your booth business and getting into a group with other antique booth business owners, you can join my Booth Seller Bootcamp online course the information for that is right up here. The course is open. It's now always open for new participants, and I'd love to have you. Until then, I'll see you guys. Have a great day. Hope you have great sales in your business.